Go ahead and just say your name into the recorder. Uh, Pete Goby, Private First Class. Thanks, Pete. So the question everyone back home wants to ask is, why? The Red Cross, the Pentagon, even the President have all turned tail and run. Why stay here? See, I joined up out of high school. Well, I didn't want to go to war or anything, but then I got tossed in with the 33rd and ended up doing two tours in Afghanistan. Disaster by anyone's standards. Yeah, no shit. I can't tell you how many times we rolled past kids fighting over garbage on our way to some bullshit op. So when the colonel saw a chance to actually do some good here, hell yeah, he took it. What about the people back home? Calling you deserters? Traitors? Man, fuck them. I'd love to go home, you know? I got a daughter I ain't seen since last Christmas. But my baby girl, she's safe in her bed right now. These people here, they ain't so lucky. What, I'm supposed to abandon them just because I get homesick? Nah, we're better than that. So you trust the colonel's decision? 110%. Colonel's a great man. Standing by his side makes me a traitor, and so be it. You know that one girl, the girl whose face you cut out of old photographs? Well, to Conrad, America was that girl. Fifty stars, fifty states, the whole Union, blacked out. Don't know why he did it. Maybe it was out of anger or a misguided attempt to create a symbol. Whatever the sentiment, his command team clearly disagreed. Jeff Bowles, Ken Tebby, David Long. They stood up to their commander, their friend. And in return, he tied them hand and foot and burnt them alive. Makes you wonder what he'd do to someone he hated. On a tip, we went to check the foreign relief stations in the middle of the city. Found bodies. Nothing new, except these had been shot. Burned. Along with the bodies, passports. Only one was readable. Zoe Strasberg, age 29, German aid worker. They say a paranoid is just someone with all the facts. Well, <laughs> I don't have all the facts, but I'm officially fucking scared. I don't want to believe city officials are executing foreign aid workers. Or what that might mean for the evacuation. But the facts, man, you can't ignore the facts. <sighs> I need to find the colonel. Fast, without raising suspicion. If I can get a message on the wire, maybe something's going to be done here. But if not, God help Dubai. Psychoanalysis indicates that John Conrad may be suffering from early stage post-traumatic stress disorder, resulting from failed operations in the Afghan conflict. In an individual as accomplished as Conrad, PTSD could manifest as a pronounced tendency towards egomania and calcification of moral certitude. More concerning is the way in which Conrad has been lauded as the greatest military leader since Patton. Conrad has internalized these sentiments, and they may now constitute a crucial component of his psyche. It is believed that as Conrad comes under fire for failures in Afghanistan, he will likely go to extreme lengths to internally fortify belief in his reputation. Conrad will begin looking outward to explain his failures while nursing a growing paranoia toward his superiors. It is unknown how Conrad's declining mental faculties will hold up in the face of another public failure. Okay, Colonel. Call me John. Oh, uh, yes, sir. John. Shall we start? You're not recording this, are you? What? No. No, of course not. Good. I, I don't want... People need to hear my words, not my voice. I totally understand. Yes, I think you do. You've been a friend these past months. It has been helpful having someone who just listens. That's that's very nice of you to say, sir. What are you doing? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. This, this pen <laughs> doesn't work. I, I, I gotta get another one. Turns out our favorite DJ used to be one Robert Darden. Worked with Rolling Stone for years. He was the Hunter Thompson of celebrity fluff pieces. Darden had obviously tuned out by the time we got here. But looking at his notes, well, it seems he'd been trying his hand at some honest-to-God journalism. 
Notes on the evacuation cover-up, the tragedy, the human cost. <sighs> Maybe it's time among the soldiers washed some of the bullshit off them. Who knows? But it's a genuine shame this, Bob Darden, will never meet his deadline. The cost of our presence here continues to grow. These people have seen the end of the world. No food. No water. No hope. Friends dead. Family butchered. They live in hell. And yet, they still take time to smell the dying roses. I get why the Colonel does what he does. But if these people can still muster enough soul to create art, maybe there's more than he sees. I've been thinking a lot about Murrow, broadcasting out of Blitz London. He helped people. He showed him something that the Nazis couldn't flatten. That truck out front has an old CB. If just maybe I could put my hands on some, some speakers, I... I <laughs> oh, wouldn't that be something? Half of Conrad's men are swinging from lampposts. Black eyes, swollen tongues. The rest are emptying clips into civilians, calling it resource management. All on Colonel Conrad say so, and yet, these people worship him. Why shouldn't they, right? I mean, they're clothed, fed, sheltered. And until we showed up, relatively safe from harm. These people killed Lugo to protect Conrad. And I killed them to protect myself. At least that's what I'm telling myself today. As an occupying force, it is important to set a good example. As such, please keep in mind the following protocols. Grooming standards are to be kept at all times. No fraternization with civilians of any kind. When off duty, please keep music, etc. at a reasonable volume, so as not to disturb the local population. Absolutely no drugs or stimulants except as provided by medical personnel. Alcohol restricted to one beer per soldier per day, with a meal as available. Share time on the putting green or access will be revoked. Each offense will warrant five demerits. Five demerits receives an official warning. Ten, two weeks hard labor. Fifteen, public flogging. Looting and excessive force are not tolerated and will be met with the strictest punitive measures. To my men, I don't need to remind you of the events which have led us here. We are each branded by our actions, for good or ill. Yes, there is darkness to come, but take heart, for the storm will soon break. There will be chaos in the coming days. As your commander, I know you will persevere. You are the damn 33rd. It's been the greatest honor of my life to serve alongside you. That is why I can trust you with this final order. No matter what, endure. Be ever vigilant. Hold the line. I've been forgetting when I am. You should know you're always there. And keep repeating the next time, time, next time, you won't. I hate this lie the most. Mostly, I just hate the want. Jeremy. Someday, people will tell you about your father. For that, I'm sorry. 
I love you.